Welcome, everybody. It's True Fire Live, and we are stoked to have Rick Vito in the house. Rick's playing that Reverend guitar, a little bit of slide for you. He's been here uh, two days now. We just wrapped his first True Fire course, Slide Soul Shaker. Um, you're going to dig this one. We majorly digged it here. Uh, let's see. Let me tell you a little bit about Rick. Uh, his pedigree is a mile long. It's going to take a couple secs here. He has played, toured, and recorded with John Mayall, Bonnie Raitt, Roger McGuinn, Jackson Brown, Fleetwood Mac. I think he played with Fleetwood Mac for four years or so. Uh, Rick came on my radar screen way back in 1986. I was, I don't know, three or four years old back then, I think. Um, there was a MTV video, I believe, of Bob Seger's Like a Rock video. And I wasn't that familiar with slide guitar. It was really kind of off my radar screen. And that solo and those fills in Like a Rock just, you know, lit me up as it did, you know, probably many millions of people. Um, you can Google that up on, on YouTube or elsewhere. See this phenomenal video of Rick playing that solo. I'm going to ask him about that solo in a little bit. But let me tell you a little bit about this course. Um, it's called Slide Soul Shaker. It's been 10 years in the making because it was 10 years ago that we ran into Rick at a NAM show. And you know, asked if he would like to do a True Fire course with us. And he said yes, you know, and I think he was sincere, but he's a very, very busy cat. And one thing or the other, you know, and every time we'd run into him, we'd ask him, nudge him again. Finally, Ali cornered him at uh, the last NAMM show. We were at Bourbon Street at a reverend party there. They, they do phenomenal parties. And, uh, and he said yes, and we booked a date, and here he is, and, you know, they say, uh, you know, beware of meeting your heroes, because you might be disappointed. Um, this is so untrue in this particular case. Rick is not only a phenomenal player, he's just a phenomenal human being. It's been a blast over these two days. And uh, Rick... Officially, welcome to True Fire, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I know you're doing great. <laughs> Have you had a good time here? No, no. I've had an amazing time here. <laughs> That's the right answer, man. That's right. So... Um, the first question I have to ask you is how long, how long you've been playing slide and why slide guitar? And why slide guitar back kind of, you know, in an era when slide wasn't that really popular an instrument in, let's call it popular or rock music? Well, I've started playing about uh, 69 or so when I was in college. And um, it was two events that happened at that time, uh, or three, I, I heard it on the, on records, and uh, I, I just like caught my ear right away. But then um, one of the first professional jobs I I got with my band was opening up for John Hammond Jr., and of course he was uh, playing some slide guitar and acoustic uh, national resonator. And then uh, one morning I I was in my room and I heard this slide guitar coming out of the kitchen. I thought somebody had a record on. And then here it was my friend, Ricky Valenti, who was actually an amazing singer harp player. And he knew some slide and he was playing it in the kitchen. I said, you've got to show me that. So he showed me the walking blues. And it's just the sound that was mesmerizing. It caught my ear right away. And I have not ever been able to let go of it ever since then. And did, did you, when you started playing slide, did you play it in standard tuning or open tuning? The first uh, thing that I learned was in uh, a G tuning, and that was the the walk and blues style of uh, Sun House. Um, what do you you know? What qualities of playing slide do you think 
um, you know, are, are, are most important to you or, you know, would be attractive to somebody that wants to get into it. You know, the, what you hear all the time is, oh, my God, you know, I've got my hands full just in standard tuning. Right. To learn new tunings, to learn a new technique is just yeah. too much for uh -huh. me. What, what would you say to that person? Well, the thing of it that, that I love about Slide is, is that it allows you a certain kind of freedom that uh, you're not inhibited uh, by playing fretted, a fretted instrument. This thing, you can glide in between frets. You can get pick up quarter tones and half tones, and sort of it's, it's got that quality of a, of a human voice. And to me, I think that that's what gl grabs the listener. And it, it can be haunting, it can be mournful, it can be very, very uplifting and exciting. It just is something that, that I think most people like the sound of when it's done well. How often are you playing slide? Uh, you know, l l just talk about some, some of these bands or artists or even on your own solo records. How many solo records do you have now? I think I've just finished my 10th. 10. And, you know, how often are you using slide versus, you know, no slide? Well, easily half, but probably gravitating to more like 60%. And on my last two records, um, I've had two records out. Uh, one was called Rattlesnake Shake, and the last one that came out was called Mojo on My Side. And uh, every, virtually every solo is slide. So um, I think a little nod in the direction of Ry Cooter, because I don't ever remember hearing him playing something that wasn't slide. So uh, I always liked that about him. Now, one of the um, we're we're going to in this uh, live session, you know, talk about a lot of things uh, that you talked about in the course, if if you don't mind. Um, at one of one of the things that you said in the course really caught our ear, and and I think it's very liberating. You said, you know, there's no rules. Could correct tell 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 us a little bit more about that. What do you mean by there's no rules? You make right. your own rules. Okay. Well, in classical guitar, most jazz or most, you know, standard guitar, you, 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 you pretty much play uh, in a certain way that, that's been laid down before you. Whereas slide guitar has had really primitive, humble beginnings. Uh, people uh, credit the, the black blues players in the Deep South at the turn of the 20th century as possibly the originators of the style. Certainly they developed a style, but also when the Portuguese Paniolo cowboys went to Hawaii with their guitars, the Hawaiians picked up on uh, their, the guitar and, and, uh, and probably worked out some kind of thing where they... They didn't know how to play it in the technical sense, but they worked out sounds on it. And eventually, these, uh, these sounds made their way onto the advent of the radio and recordings and into the styles of blues and uh, country western, bluegrass, Hawaiian music was very popular. And so all of a sudden, you're hearing slide guitar on steel guitars and, and on uh, national steel guitars and, and uh, acoustic guitars, dobros and such, and uh, it just made its way into American culture, but uh, it had very humble folk beginnings in one place or another. What about, um, or, you know, when dateline-wise was the kind of amplified electric guitar slide, when, when did that really become popular? Um, well, the steel players were playing electrified instruments in the 30s, um, but they didn't really come up with successfully with an electric guitar per se. There was a couple of of, exam of you know exceptions to that rule, but they didn't really catch on with the public. So the electric guitar didn't really come into prominence until the late 40s, early 50s, and um, so there again, you know, you had uh, Muddy Waters who who moved to Chicago and all those guys from the South, and they started playing their country blues on electric guitars and making records as such. And, um, and then, uh, you know, people like um, Alvino Ray was playing 
uh, steel guitar and jazz big band setting on the radio. And uh, all these different styles started emerging. And uh, eventually, they just the big bands started to shrink to small combos. They started amplifying their instruments. And voila, you have electric slide in one form or another. I love that. Uh, and you, you definitely have one of those flavors of uh, you know, uh, electric, kind of distorted, uh, grungy, growly kind of sound, right? That's um, part of it. it. Can be. Yeah, and then you have a very sweet sound as well. So uh, uh, there's a lot of range in terms of the colors and the and the feeling. Sometimes you play with a pick. Sometimes you play with your thumb. So very versatile uh, approach. Yeah. Well, I like to think of it in terms of. Um uh, feminine and masculine. Uh, when you're getting real aggressive and low down, that's sort of a masculine approach to things, you know, sort of a testosterone-filled macho expression. Whereas if you're if you're playing something really sweet and, and lovely and up on your uh, higher strings, I like to think of that as more of the feminine sound. So, and then you can mix that back and forth because we've got some rowdy ladies out there too, you know. <laughs> so uh, it's fun. It, it, I like to think of it in terms of that. Let me ask you about Like a Rock. Um, and, you know, you told us this story over lunch. I, I love this story. How, how did it come about that you got to play a slide solo on the Seeger record? How'd that happen? Well, um, I had been playing a lot of uh, slide with Jackson Brown and, uh, and just, you know, really started making it one of my, my main things. It, it really started to make a lot of sense to me. And uh, Russ Kunkel, the drummer, recommended me to Seeger because he's looking for a guitar player for a couple of tracks he had. And so I did go to the studio and met Bob, and he put this track up. It was very long passages. It was kind of a slowish song that had a nice build to it. And I was listening to it, and I asked him what he what he thought, what he wanted, and and he mentioned something, you know, that uh, didn't register with me. I said, you know, I really hear a slide guitar on this, and he said, Nah, I don't, I I really don't want that. I said, Well, will you give me one pass and just let me give you an idea what I think that might sound like? So he said, Yeah, sure. So I got that whole that whole pass, the whole take, except for the very ending of the last two chords, because I didn't know where the, so where the song was ending. Uh, we got it on the first take, and, and uh, I wound up, you know, <laughs> doing the rest of the record with Bob and the video, and I've played on several of his records since then, and I went on tour. So that all came from that one slide solo and Like a Rock that just somehow, it was a good marriage of inspiration and sound and the song. And apparently, Mr. Seeger liked it too, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> they they said they said they liked it. It, yeah. it. it worked. Yeah, boy, it sure did work. And you know, uh, of course, you know who doesn't love Bob Seeger? That solo uh, absolutely makes that song. It's not only perfect for the song; it it is kind of you know the song. It's incredible. That's I'm, very I'm nice. urging again. Go Google that video up. Go see Rick. He, you, they give you a lot of, actually, you're in a nice bit of a segment there. Yeah, you know. well, I think there's, a, you know, because there's an extra long solo in the middle, and then there's an even longer solo at the end. So I think if that's a four minute and 30 second long record, mm -hmm. I'm probably two minutes and 30 seconds of it, or, or somewhere about half of it, I that's think. That's fantastic. Okay, let's Maybe talk. Not. Let's talk about this course, Slide Soul Shaker. So you organized it in four sections, right? Mm -hmm. There's a section on technique, the first section. Then there's a section on your creative approaches. Then there's a section on tunings, and then uh, there's the performance studies. You brought in ten tracks and soloed over ten tracks. So this is a this is a big yeah. course, and um, it's got in 
you know, in my humble opinion, <laughs> you know, everything you would want out of a slide course and everything that you would want out of a Rick Vito course if you really wanted to get, you know, in into his head, into his fingers, you know, kind of get a better understanding of, of your musicality. It's a, you did a brilliant job. You Thank know? you. We're so, I really so appreciate excited. hearing that. Thank you very much. Let's touch on a couple of these sections. So in technique section, you know, you talk about, you know, some philosophies, the vocal qualities, and then you give us a variety of tips. Um, let's say muting. Let's talk about muting. Yes. Well, Show you know, and, and demonstrate, if you would. Sure. You know, a lot, a lot of people, when they're first starting out trying to learn slide, you get a lot of unwanted sounds. And it's frustrating, and it makes people give up too soon. But there's a few things that, um, that you definitely, if you know about in the beginning, uh, you can sidestep a lot of that. One of the things you have to learn, as you mentioned, is, is muting the strings that you don't want to have sounds come from. So in other words, uh, if you're playing something uh, on the B string, their second string there, uh, you want to be able to, to mute the strings below it, your G, D, A, and E strings, with the palm or the meat of your hands here. But also, you're going to need to mute that top E string. And so what I do is I've developed this unconscious uh, habit of muting that with one of my fingers. And so then I'll play the melody on the B string. And I don't get any noise from the other strings. If you were first starting out, you might, you might have a problem like that because if you're not used to muting and you haven't developed that skill, uh, you know, it's very likely that you're going to get notes or sounds that you don't want. And are there times when maybe you want some of the other strings to ring out? Absolutely. Give us an example of that. Well, um, it's really kind of fun and exciting to go from, uh, from your one chord, say you're in the key of E and E tuning, to go to your four chord or A just by using... Uh, a full chord slide in which you wouldn't use any mute. So then you might want to go back up to E on your 12th fret. Or no muting involved. It's just the full chord. And what about, you know, if you're soloing, um, is there ever a time when you might mute some of the strings but let some of the other strings ring out along with the solo? Sure. Um, you know, Double stops again, or triples, the, you know. The beauty of uh, it being a chord, you know, if you're playing your, some, something, you could... Uh, Something like that. Vibrato. Vibrato, <laughs> We yes. have to talk about that. Right. We have killer vibrato. Uh, what you. special qualities, um, you know, how, how would you apply vibrato as a slide guitar player? Well, there, there's where uh, the similarity to the human voice uh, can come into play. Singers learn to control their vibrato and use it as they need it, uh, depending on what's necessary for the song. So uh, you, it's possible to play uh, melodies using no vibrato. Or you can add a little bit of vibrato. But what essentially that is, is when you're playing slide, you want your note, you want your slide to be directly over the fret. That's what's going to give you the perfect pitch on that note. So vibrato would involve uh, going slightly sharp and slightly flat of that position directly above the fret. So just a little bit is very subtle. But you, you know, if you're playing something wild and rock and roll, you might want to make that vibrato just a little bit wider. Uh, but it's, again, 
It's up to the discretion of the player what sounds best for the song. And um, you mentioned earlier and in the course about quarter tones, mm -hmm. not, not necessarily for vibrato, but to, you know, emulate that vocal quality. Right. Give us an example of that, please. Okay, so uh, if I was playing, that's a, uh, a root note up on the 12th fret. I might just want to slide into that a little bit or, or kind of delve down into it a little bit. So I'm not really doing a whole half note. I'm playing. Now, you can only do that by bending the string with your finger, but uh, with slide, it's it's very f uh, free, and you can use it as your at your discretion. So the technique section has many other, you know, critical techniques, and and Rick's take on the best way to apply those techniques. Then in the second section, um, which I think is killer, you talk about your creative approaches. Rick has, um, for those of you who know his music, he has a very unique kind of signature sound. You, you hear his playing, you know it's him. Um, and I love the section you gave us on your creative approach. Um, I'm going to save one of the topics, but I, I know that you talk about fills in there. You talk about using slide for rhythm. Mm -hmm. You talk about soloing. Um, but play, call a track and play something for all of us. We've got a lot of people online right now. And by the way, please ask, uh, you know, if you're on the live chat, go ahead and ask questions. We're going to gather all those questions. We're going to do our best to get Rick to answer all of them. Um, but let's, let's have a tune. What do you sure. want? Uh, how about just a uh, slide in the blues? Seems appropriate. Cool. Nice. We ran out of track there. I wanted right. you to keep going. Um, so uh, there was one segment, I recall. I, I, actually, it's the last segment in the creative approach section where you talk about less is more. And you describe a situation that I think we all find ourselves in. The, you know, the, those of us that maybe go out to the local jam, you know, um, and, you know, a bunch of guitar players there, you know, usually some very good ones, blazing away, doing mm -hmm. incredible things. Mm -hmm. um, and you talked about how slide helps you kind of cut through the clutter of, of that. Uh, tell us about that again. Yes, well, uh, I, you, you're right. Uh, I've had the experience, you've had the experience, and most of us have. Where, you're either at a gig and you're in a band with guys that can play. You, you could be the keyboard, could be another guitar player, could be guys sitting in, your friends or whatever. 
And uh, you know, guitar players have a tendency to want to play everything that they know. And it's not uncommon uh, for players to want to learn to play fast. And I can appreciate that. If you have that ability and that dexterity to really shred, uh, you know, people like that. You know, th there's no question about it. It, it. it can be very impressive. But I don't want to compete with that. I never really liked that. The guys that I liked listening to were guys who played slower and with more feeling. I liked listening to B.B. King and Albert King and Amos Garrett and uh, players like Peter Green. And, you know, they, they, they said a lot with a lot less. They said more by playing l fewer notes, say, and putting more feeling into it. So that's uh, always been a big part of my philosophy. And with slide, uh, you know, it's, it's very often you can be the guy who shows up with the, with the slide on his finger and just by, by playing more slowly with feeling uh, and having your technique together enough and sound together enough that it sounds, it's making a nice sound coming out of your amp, people will appreciate that. They'll be listening to that. It's something that makes want people want to listen more. And, uh, you know, uh, it can of often work very well for a player to, uh, to step into those shoes. Which is also a kind of a very liberating lesson because... You know, there's there's two types of people that we guitar players tend to play for, right? Other <laughs> guitar players, right? Yeah. And then the audience, right? Oh, I thought you were going to say women. Oh, no. <laughs> that was the old days, man. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, we're both married um, now. Okay, there's three With kinds our of wives. people. There now you we go. play That's for our right. wives. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, you know a as a mere mortal guitar player, I'm always blown away by, you know, those players that have the blazing chops and blazing Absolutely. technique. Absolutely, and they're getting younger and younger. Oh, yes, they are. Um, so, you know, what I, what I love and what I think students will love about your, your course and your philosophy is it's kind of less is more. You can make a lot of music with very few notes, really, as you've just demonstrated, you know. And Thank you. the audience can connect to that, I think you said, uh, more readily and with greater love than they can somebody going up there and just blazing up and down, which, they, you know, they don't get. You well, know? yeah, it, it can be that they get it, but you're holding your own at least, but just in a different way. Mm -hmm. How about, um, what a, a crazy love, do we have that? Lazy, lazy love. Lazy love. Would you play that for us? And by the way, uh, we are in open e-tuning. Yeah, that's uh, right. Someone asked that question, and then someone answered... Uh, Mark answered correctly. E tuning. <laughs>
Yes. And a solo sort of like that. You've improvised most of the solos, although they all right. sound like they're perfect. Oh. <laughs> Every note perfect. Um, you might be interested in knowing we have uh, folks on from France wow. right now. Argentina, Mexico, Canary Islands, Michigan, Dallas, Texas, and Uruguay. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, man. You know, it's uh, the wide world internet, the web, right? It's crazy. He is. Who would and have ever thought? Hello to, you know, everyone out there, no matter where you're from. We yeah, thank you for, for tuning, tuning in. in and um, checking out Rick. And uh, we've got lots more to share with you in this session. Let's ask, uh, get some answers to a few questions. Great. Um, one question was, you know, are there various tremolo or vibrato techniques? You know, are there, you know, wide vibrato, uh, you know, are there d d different techniques or is that something you kind of just feel your way through in the moment? Yeah, I think that um, developing your own vibrato is a key way to uh, make your style sound like you. That's one of the main things you can do to uh, give yourself some individuality as a slide player. And uh, I think of like Elmore James's vibrato was, was, was just so him. Uh, and another guy called Robert Nighthawk had, had a, just, a, just a mesmerizing vibrato. And those are the things, along with the, the sound that they made with their guitars, and they both played cheap guitars. So again, you don't have to have a ten thousand dollar Les Paul to, to to sound good. You can you can go to the pawn shop, or you can go on eBay, or whatever it is, and buy a, a crummy guitar that you know by regular standards, and and raise the action on it, and all of a sudden you got a beautiful sound and slide guitar. Wait, you 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 mean we can't spend? that kind of money on a new guitar and sound better? Is that what you're <laughs> telling us? <laughs> well, I think you could. Ah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to. But uh, to answer the question, yes, yeah. there's all kinds of vibrato, and, it's, and that's one of the things that people develop individually that makes them sound like them. Cool. Another question, although uh, New York just signed in, Belfast just signed in, Alabama, Netherlands, UK, um, Got a lot of fans out there, man. Well, and and apparently nice Reverend has a lot of fans. Getting yes. a lot of great shout outs to the Reverend guitar. Rick will tell you a little bit more about this instrument and Reverend and a new one that's coming out shortly. I already have an order in for that new one. And in fact, when this course launches, uh, we just spoke to Ken and Penny and we're going to do a, a nice promotional giveaway Nice. Uh, for the other one. But we're getting one for the studio. That's for sure. Okay. Um, I like that. So second question, string height, they're asking. I noticed, I snuck uh, kind of while you were out, I mm -hmm. think. Yes. Um, talking on the phone, Tommy and I snuck over and played your guitar. I confess, it was me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your strings are quite high. Yes, I think that uh, uh, that's another mistake that, People just starting on slide make they try to they try to play slide on their regular guitars with regular action which is usually pretty low and again you get those squawks and the sounds and squeals that you don't want so uh, I put thicker strings on my slide guitar I have a guitar that's just set up for slide that's all I want it for and uh, we measured this one here. I think on the treble side at the 12th fret, it's 3 sixteenths of an inch high and an eighth of an inch high on the, uh, on the lower end, on the low E side at the 12th fret. Uh, so that still gives you uh, the ability to play a little <laughs> with your fingers and, and then slide also. So, uh, but yeah, uh, it's going to give you... And this is my approach, because I know that there are some slide, great slide players out there that use a, uh, a lower action, maybe thinner strings. I use from, uh, I start on a 13 on top, 13, 17, unwound 20, 
and then 30, 40, 50, I use Kurt Mangan strings, and uh, that's my slide set up. But other people use a regular 10 to 46, a little bit lower action, and a little bit uh, less dense of a slide, maybe a glass bottle or something like that. But mm -hmm. I like a higher action, and it, to me, it gives you a better tone and sustain. So that's what I recommend. And, and you also mentioned, um, uh, you mentioned in the course that some people play with a very low action and, ah, and a lighter right. touch. And that's right. Can, you know, that back to your basic principle of this, the, you make your own rules, right? Exactly. Um, there are no real set rules because this is something that you can take on and just develop it on your own terms, your way. And uh, in fact, the more you do that, the better chances you have on winding up with a sound that sounds like you mm. and not one of the happening guitar players right. of our era. So um, we'll talk more. There's more questions about the Reverend guitar, and we'll talk more about that at the end of the segment. But one, one relevant question right now is... Um, if you buy one of your guitars, can you adjust these string heights easily enough with the bridge or the nut? Or Yeah, that's one of the things I wanted to make sure was uh, really easy to do. It's just a simple turn with a, with a normal screwdriver, raise your bridge up uh, higher or lower, and same with the pickups. It's not a problem. And uh, my guitars um, use a a pan switch instead of a toggle switch to employ all the little sounds in between these two guys. Mm. So you can go full treble, full bass, um, dead center, or mm -hmm. little increments of sound in between that. And Very I find cool. that that's uh, useful. So instead of just switching to one pickup yeah. or the other or both together, you can really right. graduate, gradually adjust exactly. the tone. Exactly, yeah. Nice. So, and, and you'd be surprised how how many different sounds you can get out of your guitar doing it that way. I've Here. always thought it was kind of a limiting idea mm -hmm. just to put a three-position toggle yeah. switch on a two-pickup guitar. Yeah, crazy. All right, another question, and then we'll get back to more playing. Um, uh, well, we have a gear segment. Someone's asking about the different types of slides. Let's do that in the gear segment later. Okay. Because okay? you brought in a whole bunch of different slides. Mm -hmm. um, question. Practice before a concert. Do you do that? How, how long do you do that? What do you do? How do you get ready for a performance? I think it's a really good idea to, to warm up uh, before you go on stage. Um, I remember one time when I was with Fleetwood Mac, we had uh, Gary Moore, great player, opening up for the show. And that guy, I listened to him he had an amplifier in his dressing room, and he played for at least an hour, just ripping. So when he hit the stage, man, he was already one set into his act, you know, and, and it's, it sounded great. And so uh, I've always kept that in mind. So it's a good idea. Play as much as you can, and it kind of loosens you up a little bit, gets, gets the nerves, you know, settled down a little bit and get your hands flowing. And so, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Cool. Um, third section of slide soul shaker is about the the different tunings, some of the your favorite tunings. Mm -hmm. um, think you do uh, open E and open D. Mm -hmm. You do G and A. Mm -hmm. You do you even show us some stuff in standard tuning. Yes, and then you do this thing. You call it magic G tuning. The magic G tuning. What the heck is that? Would you would you show us that and, and yes, demo sure. it for yeah, us? Yeah, I'd be happy to. It's just something that I was messing around with a couple just recently, actually. Although I I've I've messed with these tunings before, but I discovered that if you start out in an E tuning, which uh, again is E B E uh, G sharp B E. You take your, your G string, if you go up a half step, you have, uh, if you were in using D tuning, which is the same tuning but a whole step down, they would call this dadgad, 
but it's really a suspended fourth, E suspended fourth tuning. Uh, it, it's kind of like you can get this this wild kind of jazz sound like. <laughs> That's just <laughs> one 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 half step up on your G string. Back to E. Okay, if you go a half step down, uh, stick with me. I'm just going to use a tuner so it doesn't sound awful to you. Uh, you're now you went from E major tuning to E minor mm. tuning, which can have a real nice. You're kind of haunting. Yeah, that's, so that's kind of fun. That's killer, man. So just let's reiterate, because all you're really doing is taking the G string. That's if, right. If you're in open D, for example, the G, is a, a G string is F sharp, right. right? Yes. So if you're in open E, yes. you're you, in G, you're, you in just go up G a half major step. Would be, G major would be a, a G sharp, yeah. right? So you raise that G sharp to uh, an A, just a half step up, and you get that jazzy yeah. kind of so dad-gad dad one. Yeah, so dad-gad in, oh, in, e. in E. Yeah. And then what I love what, what you just it did, lowering it to, a regular to the G. minor third, right? Be yes, you, be, you, you have an E minor chord then. That's right? nice. Now you can take it a whole step down from there. Yeah. So this is a whole suite of Magic G tunings, right? Right. I should call it the Magic G Suite. You should. So this is a kind of a uh, an E suspended second, and it's kind of, it's kind of an a, a ethereal kind of a sound like. crazy so um we were also chatting about you know the the proverbial you know stuck in the rut which we all get stuck in that rut you know um and how going to an open tuning mm -hmm. you know it's not like abandoning standard tuning it's just giving you a whole different kind of palette of colors that's right and taking you out of your kind of muscle memory familiar zone almost, you know, for almost forcing you to find kind of new, cool sounds. Sure, right? and, and, you know, when you, f when, you, when you land on one of these tunings, or you can either make up tunings yourself, you know, it's, there's no limits, there's no limitation. Uh, that might inspire you to write a whole song around that tuning. People do that all the time. And, uh, like, for instance, in that, that little ethereal-sounding thing that, that I just improvised something on, I mean, you could easily work that into the motif or, uh, you know, the backdrop of, your, of a whole brand new song based around that tuning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have one more tuning in the Magic G series <laughs> going down now? one more half step. So uh -huh. that was a whole step down from, uh -huh. from uh, uh, G sharp okay. to, uh, let's see, G, G sharp, that would, be a, that would have been an F sharp. Okay. Okay, so now we're going all the way down to E. To E? So another so we have whole a, step a, down? A whole, yeah, that's right, a whole step okay. down. So we have two E's. We have your, an E on your D string 
and an E on your G string. Mm -hmm. And now it has a kind of a modal sound. You have no third in there. Mm -hmm. It's modal, sort of, and uh, so that's kind of exciting. Yeah, we we love that. All all those tunings are in the open tuning section, a along with great tips and licks and insight uh, about open D, open E, G, A standard tuning. But um, you know, personally, I've never, <laughs> I've, I've I've never I've never been exposed to the magic G world of tuning it's, it's killer <laughs> well um, that's why it's magic yeah and you know it's you know we we all know that you know open tunings are quite common with slide guitar but i didn't i've never really kind of taken it in my own head to the next level which is you know innovating your own tunings and doing creative things like you've just shown us so a very kind of ear and eye opening. And thank you for sharing that again with us. Thank you. We're all going to be in Magic G tonight, I guarantee you that. Um, okay, now the fourth section is 10 performance studies. And that's really special for us because in a big kind of artist master series course like this, it's usually what, Tommy, five or six performance studies. Um, Rick is an overachiever, came in with 10. We did all 10. Um, let's, let's do a couple of those, Rick. We have, uh, uh, I don't know what tuning you're in. Can you get to whatever tuning you need to do walking blues in easily enough? Yeah, um, I'm in E tuning right now. Um, okay. I can easily get to... Or, or Lucky some Devil or... Uh, trouble in E? Troubles, troubles in E, yeah. That's, uh, and it's sort of a raucous one. So, d so don't let me go on too long. <laughs> this, Look this, up and we'll start fading. This is one one we're gonna we're gonna uh, use the rear pickup on to give it a brighter sound, and we're gonna add a little overdrive to it because it's sort of a rock and roll track. You know, it's just three chords, but it's it's trouble. You did go on a little bit more, but <laughs> that was great. Man. Uh, um, thank you. How about 
Uh, what tuning is Lucky Devil in? Lucky Devil, uh, or, I think that's or an walking A, or blues. Walking Blues. Yeah, that's that's going from E tuning to A tuning in. So we just need to change three strings. You're you're not looking at your tuner. <laughs> I'm going to go to the tuner. I don't want to hurt these people's ears too badly. So that was just the rough. I tuning. don't think there's any risk of that happening, man. So yeah, uh, going from from E to A, or to A to E is not too much of a problem. And then uh, if you're in D tuning, it's not too much of a problem going to G tuning, and back and forth between those. But going from E to D or from G to A can be very problematic if you one don't have a tuner. One of the well, f first of all, I have a question, which is, you know, if you're in concert, are you changing tunings in between tunes? And do I'm, you I'm having a second guitar there. That's okay. In it. If I if I have to play a song in A, yeah. that requires A tuning, mm -hmm. I'll have a second guitar. So you'll use the A uh, for the G tuning as well, or? Yeah, I don't really play D and G tuning live too much because mm -hmm. I like it for recording, but yeah. live. It goes down a little lower, changes the tension of your strings. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I prefer to uh, try to sing a little higher if I need okay. to and uh, uh, keep sense. it in those two tunes. So E and A, you'll usually have a guitar tuned in each, right? That's right. And then um, we have a question about, so you know you play in standard tuning, you play in all these different open tunings. The question is, how do you keep, you know, the, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, the fingerings and the shapes and the positions, how do you keep Separate. that in your head, you know, so sometimes you can shift it's difficult. gears? Sometimes it's difficult. I'll, I'll wind up, uh, you know, strapping on the guitar that's an A tuning, and I'll still be playing in the E tuning positions mm -hmm. for, you know, for a few seconds or whatever. I'll, I'll realize, got to stop that, got to get into <laughs> a different mode. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a challenge sometime. That's mm -hmm. uh, uh, another thing that uh, you know I'll, I'll do sometimes yeah. is uh, I'll throw a capo on, ah. uh, but that's 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 really not for the faint of heart because yeah. that must be pretty you'll throw tricky your tuning too, off right? a little bit and and you and you gotta you gotta you have know to recalculate the, everything. You have to right? recalculate, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll, it can be. We'll challenging. save that for the advanced course. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hope I get advanced enough to teach you. Ah, uh, you. I think you're there already, man, and and beyond. Um, what are we playing? Um, walking, walking, walking blues. blues. And this is sort of a, the. Uh, I was mentioned earlier that my friend who was playing the slide guitar in the kitchen, Rick, who taught me the first thing I ever learned on a slide. He was playing, I believe, this song or something like it. Mm -hmm. It was a. He was a big Sunhouse fan, and I mm. became a Sunhouse fan. Uh, so that's where this came from. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
cool, man. That's on the course as well, right? The that ten, is. We have 10 tracks, all to, Tommy, 10 all together. Is, right. And that one's on, on the course, right? It is. So all of the solos, um, not, you know, they're, they're different than what Rick just played, but very similar approaches, are all featured performance studies. They'll all be tabbed out. We'll have the sync to the video, you, you know, the, the looping, the uh, All slowdown. the things we love about True Fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, we're going to save I'm Not Alone. What tuning is I'm Not Alone in? That is in D tuning. Okay, so we'll, I, I'm, I'm going to tell them a little bit about Reverend. Why don't you get to D tuning? Because we'll, we'll play that out. All right. Um, so this is not a paid advertisement, we, and we don't do that on True Fire Live streams or or anywhere on True Fire, really. But, you know, I wanted to shout out to Reverend Guitars. Reverend Guitars has been around a really, really long time. Um, we own our, uh, easily eight or nine Reverend Guitars ourselves. Um, uh, we love them. We love the people. We uh, remember Joe Naylor, who started the company up way back when, um, when we were just starting out as well. So they've been around for a very, very long time, very passionate about their instruments and their design and uh, really good people. And then uh, Ken uh, took the company over a couple years ago. Joe still works with them as a consultant, and he's involved in some other awesome concepts that he's pioneering. But these are really, really good people. And you know what? Um, when you have really good people behind a product, they put you know their heart into that product. And that's why these guitars are so awesome. Um, they're super affordable. One of the reasons we're able to buy one at practically every NAMM show that we go to. And, um, and they sound great as evidenced by what you've just heard on this live stream. Um, so I, I personally uh, bought one of these Rick Vito original signature guitars. And there's a new, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's a new one coming out. Could, could you tell us a little bit about this guitar and what, if anything, is going to be different in the new guitar? Okay, so uh, I'd be happy to. This, this one we're going to refer to as the, uh, the Rick Vito Classic. And this one's been out for seven or eight years, I believe. And what we did was we put a P90 pickup, which everyone's familiar with, in the neck position. But I pulled it away from the neck just a little bit so uh, that when we're dead center between the two pickups, it has a slightly... Uh, untypical sound that you'd find. This pickup here looks like a humbucker, but it is not. Um, I have always liked the, uh, the cheap Supro National Airline electric guitars from the 50s and 60s, so uh, w we sort of went for that kind of sound, and they, they really had the, the design of a humbucker visually before Gibson. Uh, but they are single coil pickups, and so they they have a little bit of a of a uh, sort of cousin like relationship in sound to a P90. So uh, that's uh, that's the sound of this guitar. The two single coil pickups. Of course, we have the the uh, pan switch that I mentioned. Reverend uh, has a bass roll off switch, that, which uh, most guitars don't have. Um, say you're in a room and you've got a little bit of a too much fullness coming out of, because of the room or your amp settings. You can roll off that little bit of your low end as you need it and make your guitar slightly brighter. So that's the basic uh, setup of this thing. This is very Art Deco looking. The new one pretty much retains the shape, but uh, the face of the guitar is mother of pearl in one, one of a couple different colors. Uh, the pickups are going to be more of a humbucking sound. We're going to have a split coil on that where you just hit the volume button and it'll pop up and go into single coil. And the jury's still out whether we're going to have the pan switch or a, th a three-position toggle switch. Mm. Where we're, we're going to A, B in a couple of guitars and see which we think uh, makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. I think we're not going to have the uh, bass roll off just to make it different, mm -hmm. to have fewer knobs on it and... Uh, so in that sense, it'll be slightly more traditional, but uh, um, 
it's going to be a very a playable guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be a uh, set neck also like this is, mm -hmm. uh, more like uh, Gibson style as opposed to Fender. And so will, you know, a per prospective purchaser who wants to play slide, you know, is it something like, oh, well, you know, I, I should have both or this, the classic is better for me for these reasons and the newer one is better for me or the newer one is better for me for other reasons? Um, well, I think I would probably always stick with this one, the classic for slide, mm -hmm. because... Uh, Number one, it's it's uh, it's got a, a set bridge. There's no Bigsby back there or anything. Mm -hmm. I believe the new guitars are all going to have Bigsby's, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean that you can't play slide on a guitar with mm -hmm. a Bigsby. I do all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this these pickups will be uh, slightly less bright than the new guitar will be. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you couldn't get a great uh, sound out of the but new the, one. But the new guitar is... <laughs> designed with a non-slide player in mind more so than a slide player i would i would say you know because there's no rules yeah <laughs> you can do you whatever, can do you, whatever want. you want but right. yeah okay yeah you know guitars with big speeds are generally not thought of as slide guitars yeah in general yeah but again yeah it doesn't affect um the sustain or anything like that i've done mm -hmm. a lot of experimenting mm -hmm. it makes no no real difference mm-hmm well, I, you know, like I said, I bought, I, I bought that when it came out. I bought it while it was still in prototype, and, you know, we still have it. We still love it. And, this one will and we're be available get a new with or too. without the Bigs B. Yeah. Sorry. Didn't mean no, to cut and, you off. You know, so we're excited. And Good. like you said, no rules. If that one works better for slide, then use it. Which we have a question here. Someone's saying, um, oh, uh, Adam just chimed in. Adam. Bond. Hey, Adam. Yeah. Uh, he owns 16 reverends, Ken Haas and Joe Naylor rule, he says. <laughs> um, the question is, would you recommend becoming a dedicated slide player or add slide as part of your whole guitar playing experience? I mean, you play, you know, 50 percent, you know, slide and 50 percent no slide. Right. Mm -hmm. So how would Something you answer like that, that question? Uh, it all depends on what you know, if. If if you are if you're already enjoying playing standard fretted guitar, I mean, there's no reason to give it up. Mm -hmm. um, it's all all depends on what you like. Uh, I I would hate to give up playing standard fretted guitar, but I express myself differently that way. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like a combination of both for me. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it's up to you. I, I I don't have a recommendation. Yeah, it's a tough question, right? And yeah, very you know, subjective. One is you know, see rule number one: there are no rules. Make mm -hmm. your own rules. And you know, there's this myth, and it is a myth, isn't it? That you know, oh, I'm not going to get into slide or open tunings because I've got my hands full with standard. It's a whole just different extension or color palette that's right of the instrument that you love to play and have a passion for so why not right right why not but one thing that that's true of slide though is you can't take it up on monday and be playing it friday or saturday at, mm -hmm. at the club and expect to have you know great results uh, i really think it's something you need to woodshed uh, for a while mm -hmm. on until you get a certain amount of proficiency with it because you don't want to come out of that gate too soon right. before you're, you're ready. There's new mapping. You have to get, see right. the fretboard. But, you know, true or not, right? You put it in a nice open tuning, put the slide on. You can get some cool sounds pretty you much right away, can. can't you? You definitely can. And, and, you know, if you use it in a very limited way when you first start off, uh, if you're playing live or mm -hmm. whatever, uh, that's that's a great idea, I think, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, You're I can saying, remember... just don't take it to the local jam until you kind of feel yeah, comfortable yeah, with it, right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. just to ease on into it. Show us some of the slides you use and, you know, if you would, demo them and tell sure. us why you have so many different slides and different materials. Well, here's a slide. This I used for probably 20 years... Um, I picked up, picked this idea from, um, 
that time when we opened up for John Hammond Jr. I mentioned earlier, and this is what he was using. You could go to Sears in Roebuck, which, you know, there's not so many of them around right now, but they're, they're not completely dead. And this is a socket, like, uh, that you remove. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's in the tool section. It's, it's a heavy steel, and there's, they come in all different sizes. And uh, also, Lowell George used this great slide player, Lowell George. And uh, so, for under 10 bucks, you can get one of the best slides known to man at Sears. Mm -hmm. And they're still available. De demo that one, would you, and talk? Sure. It's and, and tell us what, what sound you're getting from that kind of material. Okay, because it's a heavier, heavier metal and a very dense metal, you're going to get uh, a lot of sustain if you want it. Um, you know, think of uh, the lap steel and, and pedal steel players who play on like this. Uh, they're playing with a heavy bar, mm. steel bar mm -hmm. usually, and it's got a lot of mass to it. So uh, this is kind of close to that, and it just allow you to It'll sustain for a long time. Mm. It'll let the notes ring out very well. So uh, tried and true, they're they're a great slide. Cool. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, this was given to me by Vinny at VPix. This, I believe, is made out of some sort of plastic or fiberglass. It comes in, it looks like glass, but it's not glass. It comes in two sections. Look at that. You can use just this. It's very, very light, and it gets a, a less sustainy sound. You can hear that, which for some songs, believe it or not, works really well, and it works especially good on acoustic guitars mm. because acoustic guitars are even harder to uh, to eliminate those those uh, unwanted sounds mm. sometimes and you can add this second layer like this and get a little more sustain but again um, that's a, a completely different sound and a different uh, effect than you're going to get from a from a heavier mm -hmm. steel slide now these two here are the slides that I use most often. They're made by Latch Lake, and these are called Acousta Glide slide. They have a slight bit of a contour to them. They're not completely straight like that uh, Sears socket. And so if you have a little bit of a, what do they call it, a radius mm. to your neck, this will help you to, ah, to make okay. sure you hit all of the strings mm -hmm. equally. And so uh, these are made of different alloys. Um, this is some kind of brass alloy, mm -hmm. and this is a type of steel alloy. He makes another one that, that I can't believe I didn't bring with me, but it's called a chrome dome. And it's, it's, uh, it, is not, it does not have the, uh, the contour in it. It's straight, and it's got a rounded top with a hole in the end, a very small hole, which will allow some air to come in there. Mm. Here's another little tip that I, I give you if, if you're interested in getting a heavier slide. What I do is on the, the end of the slide that's closest to the webbing of my finger, uh, you know those uh, snore strips you can buy at the, yeah. at the drugstore? Uh -huh. You take one of those and you kind of stick it in there and it uh -huh. sticks and it, it gives you a real snug fit. Nice. And keep it, like if you're sweating in a hot club, mm -hmm. it won't fly off your finger and hit the drummer in the head or something. Now, those are also not only kind of concave, I guess, but tapered as well, right? Yes. And which side do you, you know? It's funny. The, the, the guy who makes these, he designed them to be worn like this. Mm -hmm. And there is the, some printing of Acoustic Glide here on the end. Mm -hmm. I said, mm-mm. If you use it this way, you're not going to hit that, that engraved ah. acoustic glide. Plus, the little extra mass at this end, mm -hmm. I think, is really good to help with your vibrato. Ah. It just assists you a little bit because it's got that little added weight. Nice. Uh, well, who's the maker of, of those two slides? Latch Lake. Okay. Latch Lake acoustic glide slides. So I recommend them. Great.
And do you travel with all these different slides in, in concert and, you know, or are you using one particular slide? I'll you, either use the, I'll, I'll, one of these. Yeah. He, and he makes another alloy that's like, you can take an axe and, uh, and hammer into it with an axe. It will not put a mm. mark on this thing. Mm. It, it's like Superman mm -hmm. or something. So I'll bring one of these or one of those indestructible ones or yeah. a chrome dome. And depending on how I feel that night, I'll, I'll use that. Cool. One of those. Do you ever use like real glass? I, I used to have a glass slide. I, 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 when I was just starting out, I worked with a guy called Bobby Whitlock. Bobby Whitlock was the keyboard player in Derek and the Dominoes with Eric Clapton. Mm. And he said, I got a present for you one day. I said, what is that? And he pulls out this Coruscant bottle. He said, this was one of Dwayne Allman's slides. And it was filled with sealing wax, you know, like melted wax mm. with an indentation for a finger. So mm. he claimed that Dwayne would sometimes put this wax inside the slide, put his finger in there, and it would make for a snug fit. But uh, I had that slide for years, and uh, I think when I moved once, it, it, Disappeared. I wish I still had it. Darn. <laughs> but uh, that's the only time I really used yeah. glass. And and was it pour hot wax, then put your finger in, let it mold you, around? Yeah, or? yeah. You you'd wait till the ma the wax melted or uh -huh. uh, dried a little bit, yeah. but it was still moldable, and then you stick your finger in there. It would make pretty a mold. good idea, right? Yeah, it was a nice snug and added a little weight to the slide. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I used that for a couple of years. And what pedals are, do you typically use? Well. Um, I always uh, have a tuner, of course, and then I like to keep a, a reverb, an echo, and some sort of drive or um, a drive pedal or uh, a boost pedal that just give you a little bit. Uh, if I use a drive pedal, I have, I have it set to almost clean. It's just the, the boost in level is what I'm after. Mm -hmm. and let the amp do the talking. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think those, uh, and some people like a compressor. Mm. Um, Bonnie Raitt has never changed her sound. She's always mm. used a, a glass bottle that she, you know, broke off from a wine bottle mm -hmm. and a Stratocaster on the middle pickup mm -hmm. and a compressor through whatever amp she had and really? always sound like Bonnie Raitt. You mm -hmm. know, she did pretty well with it. So do you ever use, um, so you have a little distortion. Do you ever, Sometimes. You know, some reverb, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, do you ever use chorus or delay when you're playing slide? Delay for sure. Chorus, yeah. I don't think translates so well because mm. when you're doing this... Mm. You're, you're adding that little vibrato thing, but a vibrato is sort of... Uh, does what a chorus pedal might do. Mm -hmm. It raises and lowers the pitch a little bit. Makes so sense. it's almost redundant to yeah. my ears. Yeah. So no, I don't I don't use that too much. Cool. Well man, thank you very much. We've run over. I hope we've answered everybody's questions and thank you all from all the different continents and countries you're in. What tuning are we in now, Mike? Uh, we're in D tuning. Uh, I'd like to mention, as long as we're live, next uh, Saturday night, I think it's October 6th, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be outside of Philadelphia, my old stomping grounds. I hope to see a lot of my friends there at mm -hmm. a, in Kennett Square. It's a, a wonderful venue called the Kennett Flash. Mm -hmm. And uh, so shout out to all my grade school, high school, and college friends who I hope to see then. Yeah, and would you, um, another question we had, what are the two albums, Rick Vito albums, that feature a lot of your slide playing? And by the way, Rick, is com you are coming back to do more, right? Oh, thank you. And we'll, you know, we'll be, you know, working on many courses that aren't slide specific. We've got a lot of topics to cover with Rick. Um, and he promises not to let 10 years go by again before <laughs> coming in the next time. That's um, right. The two albums, I think, are Rattle, Rattle Snake, Snake Shake, Shake. That's right. And Mojo on My Side features That's right. your slide playing. That's all slide playing right. on both of them. And you've got a new album in the works. Yeah, um, it's finished. It's just uh, we, we're not sure which label is going to put it out yet. Okay. So hopefully in the early part of next year, we'll have a home. And rickvito.com, people can come and 
you know, check That's everything right. out. Right? There's email on there. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. And yeah, he's come got on Facebook, out and see me if I'm in your neighborhood. Media. Yeah, definitely, definitely get him on your radar screen. Come out and see him. Uh, let him know you you met him on the True Fire live stream. That'd be awesome. Um, how about playing now? You're you're in D now. What were you in just before? I think someone was asking that as well. You're uh, in open D see. now. We were playing Walking Blues last. That was in a uh, A tuning. So okay. now we're in a D tuning, which okay, is a whole cool. step down from yeah. E tuning. And by the way, in the course, we'll make sure that. As we change tunings, you'll know what tuning we're, you know, everything will be marked very clearly. So let's do I'm Not Alone and play a sound of here, man. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. True Fire Live. Mm -hmm. 